Hi friends. So recently I got to speak at a micro conference at 368, which is Casey Neistat's makerspace in New York. It was put on by a group of people called Creators Offline and I didn't film any of it because I was busy being a creator offline. Also because I can never really be trusted to take my camera out of this room and also because I don't know how to ride a motorized skateboard, which, and correct me if I'm wrong, seems to be a prerequisite to being able to vlog in a cinematic fashion. All the footage you're gonna see in this video is nicked from some of the other speakers who I'm gonna link in the description. So I get an email on Monday, January 14th. It's like, hey, do you wanna come speak at this thing? It's next Monday, the 21st. And my initial thought is like, oh God, that sounds terrifying, no. Which means of course I say yes. I have a week to figure out what to say, but blessedly I have talked about being a small creator a lot on Al Gore's internet. So I was able to mash up my video about not monetizing your art with my video about telling stories that matter. And it leaves me about three days to practice my speech to my plants as many times as I can. That's still not enough to get it memorized. And I don't like looking at my phone when I speak in public, but it is what it is. But there's another problem. When I looked at the lineup and thought of the place that I would be speaking at and started to see the excited tweets from people traveling from whole different countries to attend, I started to realize that they're all from kind of like the same Casey Neistat family tree on YouTube. They all have kind of related styles. They seem to be generally aware of each other. Whereas I come from like a completely different family tree, which is like the Zay Frank vlog brothers, stare at the camera, talky talky style. Like if we were all producing a movie together, these guys are like the DPs with a good eye for light and that cool scarf. and. I'm like the nerd in the writer's room covered in a thin layer of pizza grease. And it started to settle on me that maybe these people are expecting to see creators that they know and admire or consider their peers. And to them, I'm gonna be a disappointment. Like they're not gonna be able to learn anything from me. And then the worst part, as a defense mechanism, I started to assume that I wouldn't have anything to learn from them either. After all, I never leave this room. Like seriously, I'm trapped in here, please send help. So I walk into the space on Monday afternoon. It's cold as hell and I am super nervous. The night before all of the other speakers had went out for dinner together, but I couldn't make it cause I had to work. So I'm feeling even more out of place. Walking in like, hey guys. Can I stand in the circle? Can I sit at your table at lunch? And uh, instantly they were like, yeah, sure. Hey, how's it going? Like it was embarrassing for me how nice everyone was. Like it was unlike most creator events that I go to, like nobody had an ego that their channel was bigger than somebody else's. Nobody came at me like, hey, can you even three point late, bro? You know I can't, I'm doing my best. People were just practicing their talks and holding each other's tripods and complimenting each other's enamel pins. like. I'm saying everyone was kind. I'm not saying that we weren't stereotypes of ourselves. So I'm feeling a lot better about my fellow speakers, but then the attendees start to arrive. The door swings open, letting in a blast of eight degree air and in streams an overrepresentation of dudes with gorilla pods. So again, I'm feeling like this might not be my demographic because uh, and then the event started and everyone was so good. Like I was towards the end of the program. So as I watched everyone do so well, I started feeling more and more like I was gonna comparatively fall flat. Like Swoop delivered a thoroughly structured guide to getting out of a rut that she made sound like a natural off the cuff improvisation. Brian confessed to me earlier that he was nervous because he was the creator that was speaking with the smallest audience, but I doubt that'll be the case for long because he high key gave the best talk of any of us. Cody delivered like a full on slam poem that would be right at home at the starey starey talky talk part of YouTube. Like he was beating me at the only game I have. I'm near the end of the program after a 30 minute snack break, during which I just stood in the corner holding a bag of popcorn that I was too nervous nauseous to actually eat. But then the woman who had been sitting next to me for the top half of the conference introduced herself. She admitted that she was feeling a little bit out of her element because her work involved producing video for nonprofits. And I was like, yo, same. I'm not the one of these things is not like the other of the room anymore. Like she didn't even have a gorilla pod. I abandoned the popcorn and took my seat again thinking, 
Now I know who I'm giving my talk for. You know, there could be 100 people in the room and 99 don't believe, but all it takes is one. I got up on stage and started to talk in that like nervous voice that sounds like you're about to cry. But then I heard someone in the audience doing those like poetry reading snaps at a point that they liked and I stood up a little taller. Then people laughed at my human centipede of content joke and I got even more confident. Maybe even too much so because I was like, oh, I've got this from here and put my phone in my back pocket only to promptly forget the last line of my talk and have to make it up on the spot. But I did it. And even though my talk about keeping your day job and being intentionally bad at gaming the YouTube system, if that makes you good at making your art, isn't the most aspirational message, people still dug it because the room was full of small scale creators who just wanted to compare their various approaches and talk about ideas, even if they were different from their own. It's almost like they planned it or something. No matter what kind of room you're in, you have something to contribute and your stories are a way to build community and empathy. And that is aspirational. And also why I started this channel, people were able to connect to that. Just like I was able to vibe with the cool work that they're doing that also gave me some ideas for how I might get out of this box sometime soon. I thought I wouldn't fit in and then I decided I wouldn't fit in. And I was wrong twice because I was trying to see other creators in the simplest terms, in the most convenient definitions. But in the end, what we found out is that each one of us is a brain and an athlete and a basket case, a princess and a criminal. Does that answer your question? In the comments, tell me about a time when you were wrong about a first impression. If you like this video, please share it with someone who you think might like it. And if you haven't seen my most recent video before this, check it out, give it a little love. I'll see you soon. Bye.